Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the Family Friday webinar. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started since it is noon. Um, but this is our first webinar, so we'll be talking about um, just like a welcome to family and support. A quick couple of housekeeping items before we introduce ourselves. Um, so an overview of the family webinar series is that they will be on most Fridays throughout the summer with the exception of a couple um, at 12 p.m. noon Eastern time. A couple of Zoom reminders, the webinars are recorded and will, will be posted on the Emory YouTube channel under the Oxford playlist, which will have a QR code for that at the end. Um, we are also not utilizing the chat feature, but we are utilizing the Q&A feature. So if you look at the bottom of the screen, you should be able to see the Q&A um, where you can submit questions. Um, we will save most of our questions for the end of the webinar um, as we hope to answer our question, your questions throughout the process of the webinar. And then another just quick note, we do have QR codes linked throughout um, the presentation. And so I did wanna share a brief overview of how to scan a QR code in case any of y'all are unfamiliar. Um, so what you'll do is you'll take your phone and turn on the camera app. You will frame the QR code within the camera and then click the pop-up. So a link will pop up on the screen and you'll just click that to go to the web page. And then, we will take a brief moment to meet the presenters. So I'm Stephanie Maddox. I'm an assistant director in the Office of Student Involvement and Leadership. Um, my functional area that I oversee is transition programs, specifically parent and family programs at Oxford. Hi, everyone. I'm Veronica Roman, director of student involvement and leadership. I'm also an Oxford grad from 2009. So Oxford holds a very dear and sweet place in my heart. I've um, been working at Oxford for about 10 years now. Um, and like Stephanie mentioned, you know, part of student involvement and leadership is that at larger institutions, um, a lot of the functional areas that are in our office are actually respective offices. So for example, orientation is typically its own office, um, parent and family programs, its own office, community engagement, it's its own office. At Oxford, uh, we have about five functional areas that fit under our office, including transition initiatives and parent and family programs, like Stephanie mentioned, which is why we wanted to host these workshops for y'all, just to make sure that you are supporting um, your students' transitions to campus. And we're really excited, whether you're joining us live today or whether you're just like watching back on these webinars, we hope that they are a good resource for you all as we move through them. And please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions as we go through them. Yes, and like Veronica said, we're excited you're here, or as I like to say, oxided. Um, get the little Oxford plug in there. Uh, you will hear it throughout orientation, especially when you arrive to campus, you may end up chanting it. So get oxided to learn more about Oxford. So today we will be talking about onboarding experience, so what that looks like for the summer and fall, and then resources to help you stay connected and just like next steps throughout the summer. Um, so first we'll talk about the onboarding experience for June and July. First, um, your students will be receiving um, what we call an Eagle update. So this is a biweekly communication that sends updates and information to help prepare your students for their transition to the campus. Um, one thing we like to highlight in this is that it will go to your students and we hope that you will be a supporter and empowering them to take ownership over their onboarding experience. So um, as you're, you're talking with your student, make sure to ask them what they're learning from the Eagle update and then also if they have questions, encourage them to reach out to offices to learn more. We also have the welcome website. So there's a QR code on this page, but really it highlights our what's next checklist, our orientation schedule and orientation information will end up being shared there. Um, highlights academics at Oxford. Any of our international students have some additional resources on there as well as highlighting our residential life and dining and student health. So this page is super helpful as they're getting ready to come to Oxford and it'll be updated with information to help with their onboarding. We also have an Emory Essentials course. So this is a virtual asynchronous summer orientation. So for us, this is on our Canvas course. It helps 
um, cover the following topics. So college, like our education programs, more information about course registration and preparation. So advising, things of that nature, campus resources. So as we are trying to learn more about what we have on campus, um, getting connected to like academic resources, support resources, as well as what campus life looks like at Oxford. And then um, one of the big topics for students is academic advising appointments. So our academic support center, also known as the ASB, is available for appointments for incoming students throughout the summer and of course through the academic year. Um, there are some appointment options. So they have small group sessions via Zoom, course planning sessions. Um, so these are like larger group sessions. Um, and I think they have around 30 or so planned for this summer um, where students can learn more in like a group on how to plan for their courses um, and their academic experience at Oxford, as well as individual appointments. Um, one note with the individual appointments is they must have reviewed the Canvas course. So the Emory Essentials course that I just talked about, um, they must have reviewed the content in there before scheduling an individual appointment. Um, they can schedule an appointment through the Emory Essentials course, or also they can contact Oxford Advising um, at the email listed below. Um, another note too is that we will have an academic advising session later in June. So with our ASC, so we'll be able to talk a little bit more specifically about the academic experience at Oxford. Um, and then I mentioned this, it's also on the welcome website. There is a first year student to-do list. Um, and so this is where your student can find information um, in a checklist of just things that they need to do and deadlines. Um, so as you can see on the screen, um, it talks about for June 1st, reviewing the checklist. Um, so check, you're doing it now. Um, looking at the math placement exams, things of that nature. So it basically goes through a list of all of the things that students should do before they arrive to Oxford in the fall. Cool. And now we'll transition to Veronica. Thank you. Um, before I go into August and December, I will reiterate that checklist is so useful. Um, I think that there is something about college transition that it can be very overwhelming and there's a lot of things to keep track of. And so that checklist to me is just, a, it's a one-stop shop for your, for your students of just being able to make sure that they're on track. Um, and also I think sometimes there's this inclination to sort of try to get ahead of the transition. And part of what I ask you and your families and your students, um, or for you to encourage your students to remember is just to trust the process, you know, where you have a timeline and deadlines and things like that for a reason. And so making sure that they're staying on top of that, but it is important that they do stay on top of those and that um, we, we make sure that, you know, they're holding us accountable to the communications and that we're holding them accountable to those transitions as well. So definitely, definitely take a look at that to-do list if y'all haven't already. Um, speaking of transition, um, so I'm going to be chatting about August and December. Now it might seem kind of weird to be talking about those months in a welcome session, but um, if you'll allow me to nerd out a little bit, um, we have, we, our philosophy is that we go by Schlossberg's transition theory. And the thought behind that is that transition isn't just over when you arrive on campus, even though much of the anticipation is about arriving to campus, we want to make sure that we're providing opportunities and resources for students all the way through December to make sure that we're supporting the ongoing transition, as we know, is, is a very important part of the process. It's not just transitioning in and into the new experience, but also transitioning out of that experience and how they're going to make sure that Oxford continues to be a good fit and feels like home for them and that they're comfortable with the process. So first in August, um, you'll see an overview of, um, and I'm sure y'all have seen this before, course registration is over the summer, August 8th through 11th. As Stephanie mentioned, there will be academic opportunities to chat with advisors and do sessions over the summer with them. Um, we do have some optional, some not optional pre-orientation programs. So Oxford College has two pre-orientation programs. One is for international students. It's our international student welcome that is required. And then another one is an optional Oxford Ignite, 
leadership program. Um, that is about 70 registrants. Um, and it is, you know, we call it a pre-orientation program because new student orientation from August 20th to 26th is what's actually required of all of our students. Um, if y'all are familiar with um, just higher education welcome models in general, we operate on a welcome week, which means we want every single one of our students to be on campus to share in this collective experience from August 20th to 26th. Now, there are some students that um, want to get a jump start on that. So we do have an optional pre-orientation program. Um, you know, this is a smaller setting, 70 students. Um, it's a few days before orientation. And so they would move in on the 15th and then participate in Ignite Oxford and then continue participating in new student orientation with the rest of the class through um, August 26th. And just so you know, if you're trying to like frame the calendar around what your schedules look like. Um, so the first day of classes would be Wednesday the 23rd. Moving on, um, so weeks of welcome, speaking of transitions and the importance of it, there is something that we like to um, acknowledge is the first six weeks of a student semester is typically called the red zone. And that is really the time in which it's just the, the transition is tough. Like they're trying to figure out who are my social, you know, if in terms of like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, where do I eat? Where do I sleep? How do I get to my classes? But also who am I connecting with? What do I want my college experience to look like? And so there are these very um, like basic fundamental concerns while navigating just the nuances of bigger picture of their experiences at Oxford. So something that is a new initiative this year is what we're calling the weeks of welcome. Um, during the first six weeks of the semester, you know, Oxford has a lot of events and programs throughout the year, but what we're trying to create is a continued schedule beyond new student orientation that helps students transition, whether that's academically, socially, um, a few examples of things that may come up during the weeks of welcome. We have an involvement fair that features, you know, 90 plus of our student organizations on campus. Um, we'll also have some socials. The Office of Religious and Spiritual Life will be hosting a social. The Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion will be hosting a social. Um, we'll also have just a few general workshops like study skills or time management, calendaring, um, diet, not dieting. Dieting is a poor way to phrase that navigating the dining hall at, at a college campus and just thinking about nutrition and health and wellness. Um, and so all of those types of workshops, we're hoping that will provide a continued transition support to those first year students. Next is uh, more on the academic side, but something that we like to highlight because we're very proud of this initiative. So Discovery Seminar is um, a way of introducing students to knowing and producing knowledge within a discipline or a field of study. Um, so what we're asking every single first year student to engage in is, is a Discovery Seminar course. And they end up ranking these based on their preferences and they get matched into a course. And what's really unique about these courses um, is that they it's a cohort model. And so once they are matched in a seminar, that is their academic advisor that is teaching that course. And so they have a semester in a discovery seminar with their academic advisor um, to make sure that their you know, continued transition support. Um, and then also, it, it creates a cohort of students that are in that same course. Um, so as you can see, the seminar is capped at 16 students. So it's a small group. Um, and the idea is that you're continuing those connections within the first semester, but then that continues to be your academic advisor through all four semesters at Oxford. And so students are being introduced into discovery seminars, but they still will maintain those connections all four semesters. And one thing to note, which isn't listed here, but I think important to say is that because Discovery Seminar for us is such an important part of the transition and just Oxford experience in general, um, we do have a Discovery Seminar welcome for first year students on move-in day, on the first day of new student orientation, just to make sure that they're starting to make those connections as soon as they get to campus and establishing that sense of community around that. 
Eagle Post. Um, so one thing I'll say about Eagle Post is this is an example of a resource that's available, not necessarily to parents and families, but to students. Um, one thing that we are asking parents and families and supporters to do is to help keep students accountable to making sure that they're checking up on that because it is a daily newsletter that goes into inboxes for students, faculty, and staff. Um, it goes out Monday through Friday, very consistent. And it's super important that students be looking through Eagle Post. Um, I know sometimes that it feels a little bit redundant because it is daily, but it is our daily digest. And it's a super important resource in terms of um, meeting deadlines and looking at reminders, but also just general opportunities of ways to engage and build community on campus. All of that will be included in that daily digest. Um, and um, sort of on the back end of things, like students, faculty, and staff can also create posts in the Eagle Post. So it's kind of our um, one-stop shop for like campus-wide communication on a more consistent basis, aside from like newsletters and other platforms that we have. And speaking of other platforms, um, you're welcome to scan this QR code. Um, this The hub is sort of our way of having student organizations connect with each other and with general body members. Um, so in the hub, that is our platform for student organizations to create pages, to upload docu documents like bylaws or role sheets or agendas, um, photos, and they also post a bunch of their events and programs in that space. And so when it comes to social clubs and events and meetings and programs and things like that, we highly recommend students go into the hub because what it ends up doing is you can search by um, organizational type. So if they have a particular interest in STEM or maybe art club or maybe something a little bit more active like intramurals, anything like that, they can filter. Um, and then it'll also generate a calendar for students. So they'll be able to see, okay, in the next few weeks, these are the upcoming events. And that calendar is constantly changing. We have, like I said, over 90 plus organizations that are very eager to um, program and provide opportunities to connect. And so we really highly recommend that students continually check on that resource and make sure that they, they find a way to connect with each other. One thing that I'll jump in and add to is that the Atlanta campus also uses this platform. Um, and so if students are interested in joining things at Oxford and Atlanta, um, they can do that at any time during their Emory experience. Um, and so they can also see any events that are going on at Oxford and Atlanta as well. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, Stephanie, because we get that question a lot of like, can students um, can students engage with things going on on the Atlanta campus? And the answer is absolutely yes. Everything that takes place on the Atlanta campus is accessible to Oxford students and vice versa. And so the hub is one of those platforms that helps us bridge those um, gaps between communication because we can access everything that's going on on the Atlanta campus. And so students have not just what's going on at Oxford, but also university-wide. Thanks, Steph. Awesome. Thank you, Veronica. Um, so now we'll talk just about a couple of next steps and how to stay connected with your student throughout their Oxford and Emory experience. Um, so first we have is joining the parent portal. So the parent portal is a hub to access important information, news, deadlines, as well as getting personal newsletters. Um, so if you scan this QR code, you can, it'll take you straight to the join page. Um, and so the Atlanta campus, again, also uses this platform. So you can see what's going on at Oxford. You can also see what's going on on the Atlanta campus. There's also opportunities for you to join certain communities. So for example, if you're, your student is a first generation college student, you can join that or um, just other ways that you can connect. If you're an Oxford alum or an Emory alum, you can also join those communities um, to see what's going on. Um, I will also share that this is a place where um, we post a lot of updates. So like events that are coming up with like family weekend or for the webinars, we're also posting those um, links on there too. So that's another platform where you can get information. Um, the parent portal is open to just any like parent supporters of Oxford students um, and Emory students. 
And then we also wanted to highlight um, the Family Weekend at Oxford. So Oxford College Family Weekend this year is from October 20th through the 22nd. Um, typically, most of our program just for like travel and as you're planning, um, most of our programming takes place on Saturday. Um, but again, we don't have the schedule finalized yet. And so we'll end up sharing those with y'all closer to like orientation um, within the fall semester. So you'll get some more details then, um, but we wanted to make sure to highlight Family Weekend at Oxford so you can save the day. It's one of my favorite, favorite weekends at Oxford. So typically, you'll notice like there's a picture of folks eating on the quad. So typically we have a picnic. Um, we also have had a student showcase where students in different clubs or organizations or just students who are interested in performing um, will do a showcase for parents and families that are there that weekend. So please save the date um, because we would love to have y'all there. And then um, before we jump in to, well, I guess I'll go ahead and share what's coming up next and then we can go to any of the Q and A's that are listed in there. So coming up next, um, next week we'll have Student Health Services join us um, as well as Campus Engagement and Involvement. Um, if you want to review the videos, um, again, they're posted on the Emory YouTube Oxford College playlist. So that QR code will take you there. Um, this is our first one, so we don't have any uploaded yet, but you can save it in case you want to go back to it at a later date. And then now we can jump in to any of the Q and A's that we have. Veronica, I don't know if you can see them. Yeah, so one of the questions we got is about Eagle updates, um, those biweekly newsletters that we were talking about earlier and how you, if there's a way to change who gets what and what that looks like. Um, so we actually, um, so admissions is the one that auto generates those. And what they end up doing is they pull contact information from your students' Opus accounts. So what I recommend if you're wanting to change any email addresses or what that looks like, have your student log into their Opus account to change their um, contact information because they'll be able to change theirs as well as their supporters contact information. And so in Opus, your student has the ability to adjust who has access to what and how often they receive that communication. Um, we also got a question about Family Weekend, Stephanie. Um, so the question is, does uh, is Family Weekend for fall starts or also for spring starts too? Yes, so we are excited because it will be open to both fall and spring start students. Um, that is something that we have been advocating for. So we're excited that we're able to accommodate that this year. Um, and so, yes, it'll be open to all of our incoming students. So please come. <laughs> We do love family weekend and it's always one of the best things. I know this is a tangent, but we, uh, <laughs> we do a um, annual like picnic on the quad if the weather allows. And that is just one of my favorite traditions at Oxford is to have students, faculty, staff, and their families on the quad sharing in that. So it's, it's really lovely. Um, and I can't remember if Stephanie mentioned this, but if you are thinking about traveling for family weekend, um, the Saturday of family weekend is the day that we have like totally scheduled out for the weekend. Friday and Sunday, there's minimal programming because we know a lot of families are traveling or just, you know, reconnecting with students. Um, so I would, if you're curious about travel and things like that, like Saturday is the day to be at Oxford for family weekend. Um, and then, oh, oh, can I add one, one quick note about Spring Start students is that we do oversee Spring Start orientation as well. So if you have a Spring Start student um, that are like thinking about questions or things like that, feel free to also reach out to us at any point because we're happy to connect with them. I oversee like Spring Start leaders, uh, so the orientation leaders for the Spring Start program. Um, and so I, the Spring Start students, I love them a lot. So <laughs> yeah. Can you tell us about um, housing and food payments and what that looks like over the summer, Stephanie? Yes. So I don't know all the details about that, but we will be having a webinar series later in um, July that will cover like housing and dining. Um, but if you have questions in the meantime, if you wanna, my email is listed at the bottom. If you wanna email me, I can also help connect you with um, res and dinings for more details. But that's a great question that I don't have the answer to. <laughs> 
Well, and I'll say too, um, yeah. in that checklist, like the first year student welcome website checklist that we mentioned earlier, um, it'll show you how to access my housing website and students that are able to log into that will see all of the information in terms of like upcoming deadlines and payments in that platform too. So we do have a webinar, but if you're wanting to get ahead of that a little bit and look at, um, just have your student log into their my housing website. Um, I had a question about Eagle posts, if those are, have already started going out. Um, so Eagle posts have not started going out yet um, because Eagle updates is where all of our important information is going out until the fall. And then once the fall semester starts, that's when Eagle posts will start going out regularly. Cool. Um, health forms for spring dart due July 1st or later. That is a good question. Um, Seth, do you remember when we're having our health webinar? It's the next one. So yes. Yeah. So it'll be um, June 9th is the next date. So yeah. So it'll be next week. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but they definitely will be able to answer that question. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure for spring start, they, you have a, your deadlines are a little bit more flex because you have an extra semester. Mm -hmm. um, and so some of the communications that are going out to fall admits will be directed towards spring start in the fall semester. And so you'll mm -hmm. receive more guidance on deadlines and things like that once the fall semester starts. Cool. That was the last question, but we'll give it a little bit more time to see if anyone else has something. Okay. Well, great job, Stephanie. Seems like you covered a lot. You know, we tried, we tried. Um, again, if y'all have any questions, um, make sure you can email me. My email is super easy because it's my first name, period, my last name. So Stephanie Maddox at emory.edu. Um, if you have any questions, because we are here to support you throughout your on your, as you help support your students with their onboarding experience, um, Veronica and I will also be at future webinars um, as we're overseeing them, and so you'll be able to connect with us um, on Fridays. <laughs> so make sure to reach out if y'all have any questions. Thank y'all so much for joining us, um, and we will see you next week.